Hey everybody. Um, so we're gonna, in the last video, we looked at the integral test for series. In this one, we're gonna look at, we're gonna use the integral test to develop uh, another nice rule, um, something often referred to as a P series. Um, and so what we're gonna be looking at is this, uh, this series here. Um, the sum from, as N goes from one to infinity, of one over n to the p. And the question we're gonna to try to answer is what, what, uh, when does this converge? For what values of p, right? Depending on what p is, this may or may not converge. So we're gonna knock out a couple of obvious value ranges first. So for instance, if, if p is less than zero, right? Well, if p is a negative number, any negative number you're getting you can you can write this as a negative exponent. It becomes n to that number. So, for instance, if p is negative five, this becomes n to the fifth. And what you're looking at is a sum of positive numbers to a positive power. Right? N is going to be positive numbers. Those are clearly getting bigger. Right? In other words, if p is less than zero, then one over n to the p goes to infinity uh, as n goes to infinity. Right. Right. So go ahead. Just think about putting a number in here, something like negative two. Right. Well, then we have this becomes n squared, which clearly goes to infinity. Right. And and also if p equals zero, then one over n to the zero is just one. Right. Which means that one over n to the zero goes to one. It's a silly limit as n goes to infinity. Right. In both cases, we fail the test for, for divergence. In other words, by the test for divergence, the series diverges. Right? Remember the test for divergence. We need the terms of our series to be going to zero, and in neither of these cases it does. So we've, we've just knocked out half the number line, right? We've gotten rid of zero and all the negative numbers. So we know it diverges for those values uh, of P. Let's, let's see what happens for some of the other values, right? So for this, we're going to use the integral test. So what we're gonna look at is um, the integral, let's, let's say the function f of x equals one over x to the p, right? And right now we are looking at um, values of p, let's say p is greater than zero, right? That's what we're looking at uh, in this case, okay? p is greater than zero. Now, remember our integral test, we need a positive, uh, positive decreasing function. This satisfies that on, on one to infinity. This is gonna satisfy this for this, these uh, values of P. So to, to not understand whether the sequence, the series converges, we're gonna look at the integrals of this function um, over the interval one to infinity to see what happens. So let's go ahead and do that work. So I'm gonna take um, the integral the integral from one to infinity of, I'm gonna write this a little bit differently. I just find it easier when I'm doing integrals to write it this way. So instead of one over x to the p, it's x to the negative p. This of course, we compute as a limit in this form. Okay. Now we, I know that we did this in my, in my uh, integral calculus class. And you may, if you weren't in mine, you may have done it in yours, but let's go ahead and remind ourselves of how this worked. We, we've actually done this problem. When does this integral converge? For what values of P? But let's see how this works out. So first of all, nothing's gonna happen to our limit yet. Um, we can use the reverse, uh, I forget the, the name of it, but, but our power rule in reverse, right? So we're gonna take, add one to this power and divide by that new power. And then we evaluate this from one to T, 
There's a, there's a little mistake in there. I'll cover that in a moment, but for now we're gonna we're gonna proceed as if this is accurate. And what does this look like? Well, this one minus p is just a constant. I'm gonna put that up front, one over one minus p. And then we'll get t to the one minus p minus one to the one minus p, right? Which is just, uh, I can move the constants out front, one over one minus p times the limit as t goes to infinity of t to the one minus p one to any power is just one, so minus one, right? So we've, we've boiled it down to this problem, okay? This limit, right, the constant doesn't matter, or I shouldn't say doesn't matter, but the limit of the constant is just one. This limit all comes down to it exists or doesn't exist depending on what happens here, right? So we've got a limit as t goes to infinity of t to the one minus p. This limit is gonna be infinite if this number here, is positive, right? If this number here was zero, we'd have t to the zero or one, this would be one minus one is zero, it'd be fine. If this number here is negative, we'll talk about that in a second, but if this number here is positive, if it's bigger than zero, then you have t going to a power and you're making t larger and larger and larger, it's gonna diverge. If t is, if this is negative, then you've got one over t to a power, and it's going to converge. In other words, this thing converges, the limit as t goes to infinity of t to the one minus p converges if one minus p is less than zero or if p is greater than one. Right. So that means our series will also converge in that case. Okay, now we have, so what we've, what we've figured out so far is when the series diverges, it diverges for zero and below. We know that it converges for greater than one. We also discussed that this converges for less than one. What about at one? Well, there's a little error here. If P is equal to one, none of the work we did here makes sense. However, if this was equal to one, if p was equal to one, our integral looks like this, uh, x to the negative one or one over x dx, which is the limit as t goes to infinity of the natural log of t minus the natural log of one, and that limit is of course infinite, okay? So what we have discovered is that this integral, or sorry, this series, the series n equals one to infinity of one over n to the p converges if p is greater than one. Otherwise, right? In other words, if p is less than or equal to one, it diverges. Okay? Right, so again, this is just done with the integral test, and this is something that's actually, that I know I know the textbook actually computes this. Um, I forget the section, but it's the section on improper integrals. Um, and, 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 and anyways, we can use, in any event, we can use that result to get this P-series rule, right? And this is something you can now cite without having to justify, right? So anytime you have something in this form, if P is greater than one, you know it converges, and if it's less than one, it diverges. Let's take a quick look at uh, what's, what's going on here in a graph. So let me share, there it is, okay. So what I've got graphed here, let's get rid of these grids, all right. I've got a function one over x to the p, and I've got a little slider so I can change the value of p. Right now I've got p at negative 10. So this is x to the 10th, right? We've got this thing that's shooting up very, very quickly, right? As we remember, this is, oh, and, and then we, we, we were thinking about integrals. So here this green area is the area under the curve, right? Here it looks like this line is almost perfectly vertical. So we've got a whole ton of that area just getting larger and larger. But as we increase p, 
right? We can see that this, right, now we're looking at p squared for, or x squared. Um, here we get negative one, so this is just uh, f of x equals x, when p equals negative one. Now we've, we're moving closer to zero. Here is when p equals zero, we just get a horizontal line at one. And then as we move into negative numbers, we start to get in integrals that are, who have an asymptote at y equals zero. And it's getting smaller and smaller, but it still doesn't converge, right? Here is p equal to one. And, and we can't tell visually, right? There's not much difference between this and something that does converge. But for whatever reason, the geometry of this shape, the area just keeps getting larger and larger and larger with no bound. But as soon as we dip above one, so I guess grow above one, our graph dips enough that now this area adds up to something finite, right? And of course, the larger P gets, the more, uh, the more, the more quickly that thing, that shape descends, right? And so for whatever reason, right at one is this crossing over point. At one, the, the, the area adds up um, too large, it goes to infinity, it just keeps getting larger and larger and larger. The limits of that integral, that improper integral gets infinite. But as soon as we get above one, it snaps into place and we can get a finite result. Okay, all right, so that is the P series. Uh, like I said, you can now use that rule. Let's show it one more time. Uh, this rule here, you can cite um, as, as enough justification for saying that a series converges or diverges. See you next time.